Okay. Hey, YouTubers, how you doing? I'm going to show you a few things today about bank fishing. We're in a nice little canal area down here in the Everglades. I got two of my favorite rods. I'm going to show you basically I have my Cinco. That, let's face it, I don't care where you go connected to California. They, a Cinco, a five inch green, 297 green pumpkin Cinco with an eighth of an ounce weight, some braided line. Hey, can't go wrong. And a frog. Can't go wrong with a frog because from the bank you might get hung up. Well, you don't get hung up a whole lot with a frog. I might even start off with a frog. Well, let me just show you a, a few things that I have in my pocket. Okay. Number one, I have extra hooks and some weights. Got to travel light, travel light. On this pocket, an extra frog. Okay. In this pocket, <laughs> pack of Cinco's. Hey, that's all I need. I'm just going to do catch and release, and I could bring a scale. I could always walk back to the car, get a scale. If I get a real big one, yeah, that's what I do. I got a scale in the car, but I'm not going to carry it with me right now. I'm probably not going to be too far from the car. So if I need a whole lot more stuff, all I need to do is, is get that. Now, before I throw the Cinco, I want to show you something. One thing that I like to do, and this is important. Let's, let's re-rig this, this worm real quick. But first, let's take a, a magic marker and let's color that line a little black right here, right at the, at the knot area. That's some kind of... I got about a, foot, about a foot of line. Just a little bit of dark. Sometimes it makes a big difference. It just depends on these bright sunny days. Now, you know, let's, let's face it. Bright sunny days like today, there's not a cloud in the sky. And it's a little tougher. You might have to go to lighter line. That's the other thing. Okay, let's rig this Cinco up. And I'm gonna put a brand new Cinco on there just to show you. I'll save that one in case I run out. Okay, brand new Cinco. This is a five inch. Now five inch, I like five inch a whole lot because it casts good. It casts a long, long ways. And it's heavy. And so now I'll come through the head of the worm about three eighths of an inch. Okay, this is just basic Texas style. And that's a, that's a four aught EWG hook, four rod, pretty good size hook. And that's, and by the way, that's a, that's 50 pound line. So I, I've got heavy line on, okay? I'm gonna come through three eighths of an inch on the head of the worm. Boom, dunk, 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 come out right there. Turn it around, put it all up on that shoulder. Get it up on that shoulder, good. Okay, good like that. Now, just kind of lay that hook in there and just look at that. I'm gonna have it right on the top of the worm. I'm gonna go through the worm like this and then just lay it over like this and you can kind of just skin hook it like that just a little bit. See now that's that's perfect okay that's that's a good worm deal. Okay on the frog I got 50 pound line again and I can take that pen and I can I can mark that that uh, line again just a little teeny bit. That kind of helps. And we'll see that. Why don't you start off with the frog? And I'm using this kind of jungle pattern frog. It's, it's kind of white. And I do a lot of film work, so I like to watch it. You know, by seeing that white, it's kind of half white. It's a little bit white. And you can see it pretty good. Now, I've also trimmed that uh, tail a little bit. Here's another thing I've done with frog, frog by fishing. And that is I've cut the tail a little shorter. If you look at the other frog I had in my pocket anyway, the tails are inch longer. And uh, that's that just does a little bit, I don't know, adjust the hooks. Oh boy, they're sharp hooks. Now remember when you throw frog fish, you gotta let them take it just a second. And that's why I have this heavy duty rod and I drop it down to them. Okay, let's, let's ease over here and try our deal. Put these rods down on the, right like this. I'm gonna throw over to the edge of it grass right there. Okay. First cast is always the best cast. And I'm gonna adjust my drag. Okay, I don't have it made it quite that tight. Remember when they hit it, I gotta let them take it just a little bit. Okay? I'm gonna throw it in that slot right there. Nice long cast. Okay.
Try another cast. Now, when I get away from the cover, you know, some people fish frogs like this in open water. Now, also water gets in there, see? Kind of squeeze the water out, get it light again. Because it'll fill up with water. Okay. You know, a lot, a lot of times you'll start off with, say, a top water bite, and in your second second cast, if you don't get any kind of action going on a top water bite, I'll try a worm. Sometimes that first cast is a big deal on the top water. And the reason why I'm throwing top water is some of my bigger fish are on top water. The frog can be a real big big fish deal. So I'm going to try the Cinco now. The second. Second back up deal. Right there. Right there. Shake it loose from the from the weeds. Ooh. There's a strike. I got a strike. Okay. I set the hook a couple times. Oh yeah. Good one. Good one. Okay, boys. Good one. Good one. Good one. <laughs> nice bash. The old Cinco time. It's the old Cinco trick. Now you know, the main thing was. I held the line and the rod real high. I could really see the line as well as feel it, okay? And I dropped it down to them, setting the hook. Okay, I'm gonna throw it back as far as I can. Right there, okay, good, good. That was cool. Wouldn't it be cool if it was a second fish there? Ooh! Sometimes these fish travel two and three and four at a time. It's quite often that you can catch a couple in a spot. So, and also, when they hit it fast, kind of like he did, if you can envision two or three bass there, and all of a sudden, one runs up, he has to kind of run away kind of fast because he keep it away from the other one. So it's a fair indication there was a second pass. Okay, throw it back all the way to the end there. Get it through the grass. See, I don't know now on my second cast to go to those reeds. That's kind of shady. You know, bass have non-eyelidded eyes. They hit, the, I'm wearing sunglasses and a visor on a hat. I can handle the sun, but they, they have a harder time with the sun. So I'm looking for shade when I can find it. And I'm looking in that shady little place right there. That could be a good choice for a, a bright sunny day like today. A nice little shady spot right in there. That's nice and shady. See, see if that works. Okay. Nice little spot. A little bit of shade. A little bit of shade. So when I throw it out there, and I get this thing anchored right here in my stomach, Boy, I can really set the hook. Here's a strike, here's a strike. I got a strike. Okay, I set the hook really good. Really nice big, big hook set. It's kind of small. Hey, small ones are better than no fish. We'll find a bigger fish. We'll find a bigger one. Okay, get that worm. Now, really, once that tight, now here's another good tip. Once, once this Cinco, it, it's fragile, it gets torn up on that end. Rather than cut it off, 
just come around to this other end. Use the tail, cut just a little teeny bit off. Come right through the tail, a brand new fresh part of the worm. Hey, I don't think that they can tell the difference between the front or the back of a Cinco. It just doesn't make any difference to the bass. They hit it both ways and you save a lot of money. Okay, boys, come out. Come out with your fins up. The gig is up. It's moving along. Now, another thing about bank fishing, hey, we're with long, long pants, and I'm in South Florida. There's all sorts of mosquitoes and every kind of thing in the world, and it's, it's a warm day, but we're long pants because, you know, there's some kind of stuff in the grass. Okay, I'm gonna keep going a little farther. See, the, I can't get into a place where, maybe right down here, the marsh kind of comes up to the edge more. That might be a good deal. Okay. Nice little spot. That's a good looking hole right there. Is that an alligator sitting right in front of it too? Is that alligator? Yeah, that's a good sign. Oh yeah, I see an alligator there. There's an alligator right by that where I want to fish. <laughs> Let's see, I'll get right here. There's the frog, if the alligator doesn't come out, the frog. trouble is, alligators like frogs. I'm trying to get a bass, but you never know. Looks like an alligator. That is the alligator, but he's not coming out to the frog, good. I'm going to throw a worm over there. This edge here, I don't know, it's, I don't catch much on this edge. As, as I say that, I'll probably get a big, look at that. I said, I don't get many on that edge. Oh my heaven, I look at that big giant one. I said, I don't get many on that edge. Look what happened, did you notice how I dropped it in? Oh, son. That's a big one, son. That's a big old bass. Now we're talking. Frog time. Frog time. <laughs> I said I don't get many. Isn't that something? I just made a comment. I don't get many on the... Now, do you notice how the frog got them on the top of the mouth? That's so characteristic of a frog bite. But you got to give them that little second time. Okay, I'm going to throw it back again. That's a beautiful bass, by the way. Look at the size of him. He's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Frog time. See what I tell you? Hey, you don't catch a lot of fish on a frog, but you catch big fish on a frog. Okay, now watch what I did here. Actually, I was working this edge here. It makes sense because there's sun here and that's a shaded edge. Way over there. Just to see if there's a frog. Look at them, way out in that open hole right there. That's why I have heavy line, because I'm here at the bank, and this is a deep canal. I can't swim over there. If something wraps up, it's a great big giant fish or something, I gotta pull them out. I gotta pull them over here. So I, I recommend heavy braid when you're bank fishing, just because you can't get there. I don't know how that's gonna be. Up and over. That's the thing about the frog. You notice that I can just pull it everywhere. You can't take any other top order and do that. So it's the perfect complement for, say, a bank fisherman because he can throw anywhere he wants. There's a strike. Oh, yeah, worm fish. Big old worm fish. Yes, sir, that was, I think the fish that might have rolled up on the top water. Okay. Oh, that's a nice one. Nice one, nice one, nice one. That's it. <laughs> Woo! That's a good one, son. Yeah, they're not all small on the worm. You get some big ones on the worm. 
That's a decent fish. I'm gonna try another cast right over that same spot. That's pretty cool, son. The old five inch cinco. You know, they make all kind of different worms. But this is the number one in the country, in the, in the whole world. They make, the Yamamoto company makes more of these five inch green pumpkin worms than any other color. It's the 297 color. Any color will work, as long as it's 297. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens to that one. Another cast. Another cast. I'm going to throw this frog, frog deal. There's a fish. I got one. Frog fish. I had to let him take it a little bit. Had to let him take it. Come on. Nice, decent sized fish though. I tell you, these, these aren't little bitty bass. These are nice, big, nice, big, chunky, chunky, nice bass. Just as nice as can be. Well, it's more of a frog deal today than, than it was a Cinco, but you never know. You gotta have a little bit of both. There's some fish over there. I got another one. Another one on the frog. Frog fish. More of a frog thing than anything. Hey, but you never know. You never know what's gonna bite. That's a good chunky bass. That's a good chunky bass. Woo! Now you notice, they all get hooked in the top of their mouth. You never hook them in the bottom. They always hook on the top. Oh, there's a fish coming up behind it. I just saw this wake. He didn't take it. Big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. Right here. Look at the size of him. Look at the size of him. Look at that giant fish. <laughs> I tell you what, folks, a great big trophy bass. A great big trophy bass. Son, that is what it's all about. That's bank fishing. You can't get any better. We haven't caught a whole lot of big fish. Hey, a couple big ones on the frog, several small ones on the on the worm. Just hoofing it. A budget bass day. Wow, son, that's a big one. Hey, thanks for joining me. Hey, I'm gonna make a lot of different how-to videos over the course of the next uh, couple of years. I'm getting really strong now. So, hey, stay tuned to be sure to subscribe. That's it, let it go, son.